Hi, welcome to a new episode of Explicity Talks. I am Matthijs and I'll be talking about Bluetooth Low Energy. I'll be talking about the core concept of Bluetooth Low Energy in this talk. Next episode I'll dive into it a little bit more and explain how those little beacons work. Little devices that you can use for indoor location awareness. But for now I'll focus on the core concept of Bluetooth Low Energy. Sometimes also known as Bluetooth Smart. It's a special technology, a special version of Bluetooth that allows you to power devices well, using very little energy. There are devices that for, can last for months on a single battery. For example, heart rate monitors or other sensors. But you can also use it to communicate using your phone. In this talk, I'll explain how to make a connection from your phone to one of those devices. Bluetooth Low Energy uses a communication protocol called GAT. GAT stands for Generic Attribute Profile. GAT centers around two things. First of all, each communication exists of a server and a client. Next is that every server can supply several values grouped in services. Each such value is called a characteristic. And those services, those characteristics and even the devices can all be identified using unique IDs or UUIDs. Let me give you an example of a GAT connection. Let's say we have a phone, which will act as the client, and, for example, a bicycle speedometer, which will act as the server. The server can supply several values, such as the speed in miles per hour or in the GPS location, and group that in a service. It can also supply other values, for example, its own battery level, in another service. Each of those values is a characteristic and can exist over a few bytes of data. Let's look at some code to see how we can make a connection to a Bluetooth device. All the code that I'll be showing you can check out in the GitHub project of which the link is in the, in the description below. All the code uses the Jellybean APIs. There are newer ones available but those are only compatible with Lollipop and Up so not that useful yet. First thing we need to do in our code to make a connection is add the permissions, the Bluetooth permissions to our manifest. If you don't do that we're not even allowed to use Bluetooth in our app. Next, from an activity, a fragment or a service, we can do the following. First of all, we check if Bluetooth is enabled. If it's not, we'll ask the user to enable it. If it is enabled, we can start a search for nearby Bluetooth devices, called a scan. For every device that is found, the following method is called onLE scan. First thing we need to do is stop the scan. The scan is the most battery intensive part of the whole process, so as soon as we found the device that we're looking for, we'll stop the scan. Next, we connect to the device, using the method connect get. We'll supply this an object called Bluetooth get callback, which I'll dive into later, and we'll save the result in a Bluetooth get object. This is important because we need to hold a reference to this object so we can close the connection later. The Bluetooth get callback object that we're supplying is used by the system to call several callback methods every time interesting events happen. The first method that we'll implement is called onConnectionStateChange. This method will be called every time, well, the connection state changes. So for example, once the device is connected or disconnected or something else happens. We can use this to do the following. Once the device is connected, we'll start a search for services on the device. Which brings me to the ne next method, on services discovered. This method is called, well, once the services are discovered. So we do the following. First we connect, we start a search for services, and once this search is done, we'll end up in this method. Here, we pick out the service that we're looking for. Once we have it, we pick out the specific characteristic of that service. For example, the speed in miles per hour. Next, we need to do something interesting. We want to receive updates on this value every time it changes. So we need to enable notifications. There's a little bit of code required to do that, but once we have it, the next method in the Bluetooth get callback object can be used. On characteristics changed. This method is now called every time the value changes. So every time the speed in miles per hour changes, we get a callback in this method and we can update our UI. 
Once we're done with our connection, we need to close it. This is really important. If we don't close our connection, the device might be a little bit confused and next time you start the app, it won't connect at all. Android is a little buggy in this regard. So that's why we held the connection at the start, the Bluetooth get object. We now have it to disconnect and close the connection and make sure that everything is clean up once we're done. So that's how you easily connect to a Bluetooth device in your Android app. It's basically really simple. First, you scan for devices. Next, when the device is found, you check its services. You enable notifications on the characteristic. And then you receive updates on the characteristic. And don't forget to close it when you're done. That's it for now. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to tune in next time when I talk about beacons. And if you have any questions remaining, hit us up on the social media or check the GitHub project. Link below. See you next time.